Despite having five lovers, she committed the most horrific act, murdering her own husband. From the outside, everything looked like a fairy tale that many people would envy. But Antonio's murder will soon open a Pandora box full of lies, manipulation, and lust. Let's travel all the way to Spain, where we uncover the story of a young woman named Maria, who is also known as the Black Widow. It may be hard to believe, but Maria had five lovers at once, none of which she cared for. This history is beyond a love triangle of morals, but in fact, a story truly uncommon and unbelievable. Continue listening to find out what happens. Let's firstly learn who our main character is. Maria Jesus Moreno Canto was born on September 16, 1990, in Plana Novela, Spain. She grew up in a happy household, surrounded by her parents and four siblings, where her father owned a plumbing business to support the whole family. Maria was raised in a very religious family. Due to this, she was named Maria Jesus, a name she didn't like but preferred to be called Mehe. At a young age, Maria showed an artistic talent and she practiced drawing and won several drawing competitions throughout her childhood. As she grew up, Maria started to become very flirtatious and after graduating high school, she left her hometown and went off to study nursing in Barcelona. This metropolitan city gave her the freedom to discover herself and new experiences. There she made new friends, enjoyed the nightlife, and was ultimately convinced to never return back to her hometown ever again. It was during a professional internship where Maria met her future husband, Antonio Navarro, a mature and very successful engineer. Antonio wasn't a stranger to Maria, as he knew one of her brothers with whom he had gone to college with. In 2011, Maria and Antonio started dating, where she became Antonio's first serious girlfriend. He happened to be nine years older than her, but despite their age difference, their relationship looked almost perfect. They made the decision of moving in together, and five years later, they decided to get engaged after a magical proposal from Antonio. Soon after, Maria found a job in a hospital, and on September 3, 2016, the two officially tied the knot and were ready to progress further in life together. Their marriage appeared idyllic on the outside, but this was just a facade to hide the growing darkness. It was later learned that the couple had doubts of marrying each other since Maria had cheated on Antonio in the past, and she continuously complained about his lack of attentiveness and control, which led her to feel suffocated and oppressed. Maria and Antonio were two completely different people. He was an introvert who enjoyed staying at home, unlike Maria who much preferred to party and meet new people. Although they had these differences, they still decided to get married. It was on August 16, 2017, when everything changed. Antonio was leaving to go to work around 7 a.m., and as he was getting into his car, he was suddenly attacked and stabbed six times, where he collapsed immediately on the ground. Eight hours after the incident, Antonio's body was discovered by a neighbor around 3.30 p.m. that same day. When the police arrived at the crime scene, they suspected that Antonio's death was the result of a failed theft attempt, but this belief was quickly vanished because Antonio had all of his belongings with him, including his wallet. After contacting his family to share the tragic news, the police began their investigation by questioning his wife Maria, his parents, and finally his brother. The police asked them if they knew anyone who might have wanted to hurt Antonio, as the circumstances suggested that it wasn't a random attack, but he had been specifically targeted. His relatives, friends, and colleagues pointed out that he was kind, happy, and very interactive and did not appear to have any enemies that would do such a thing. Antonio was buried three days after his murder, where Maria read a love letter she had written for him at the ceremony. The investigation continued in a calm manner to discover who killed Antonio. Five months passed and on January 10th, 2018, the police arrested two people, shocking the public. If we take a look at Maria's alibi during her husband's murder, everything looked completely fine. She texted Antonio the night before the murder that there had been a schedule change and that she needed to work, but further investigation revealed that she was not on duty. Another thing that made the police suspicious of Maria was that she seemed concerned about her husband's death, but as soon as the police gave her a little break, 
she immediately jumped on her phone and started sending messages. The police then discovered that she had two phones and requested permission to wiretap her. As a result of the wiretapping, a mountain of secrets unraveled, including her affair. During the time that she was married, Maria was in a relationship with Jose, a 43-year-old publicist who she just so happened to meet three months before the murder. The police then had a suspect, Jose, and a motive, jealousy, but there was no link between him and Antonio, and therefore no proof of his involvement. When Jose was brought in for questioning, it turned out that he had no idea Maria was married and had only discovered this information after the murder. However, he forgave her and the relationship continued as Jose planned to marry Maria and start a family. While examining her phone, the police came across an even more interesting conversation. Maria was talking to a 47-year-old man named Salvador, who happened to be a work colleague of Maria's. Salvador was married for 22 years and had two children, who were 18 years old at the time. Colleagues described Salvador as a laid-back and polite person. The wiretap investigation proved that Maria was also having an affair with Salvador, and their entire relationship history was exposed. Maria and Salvador met in September of 2015 when he started working at the hospital. The two got along quite well despite their age gap. Their relationship began when Maria was newly engaged and ended briefly when she got married. The two stopped seeing each other, but after a while, they resumed their relationship and usually met at his place or at the hospital. What's even more overwhelming is the fact that Salvador's wife also worked at the same hospital, so Maria and Salvador were very successful in deceiving everyone. Salvador served as Maria's puppet, a person she called for any small request or other needs, such as repairing her household appliances. He simply couldn't just refuse to fulfill the needs of this lovely young woman. As the case moved forward, disturbing facts about Maria and Antonio's relationship continued to surface, and the facade they had built as a happy couple was completely destroyed. Antonio's brother was a key person that helped the police advance further in their investigation. Since Maria and Salvador weren't aware that the police were wiretapping their phones, they used this fact to set up a trap. Antonio's brother met with Maria and told her that the police are making good progress and even have a suspect. Maria quickly called Salvador to caution him after learning this information. The police had been anticipating this behavior, which made it quite evident that the two were responsible for the murder of Antonio. As a result, both were arrested on January 10th of 2018. Maria refused to accept responsibility for her husband's murder, claiming that she had nothing to do with it, and it was Salvador who took full responsibility in order to protect her. Maria claimed that Salvador was simply an older co-worker who was completely infatuated with her and killed Antonio in order to eliminate his rival and to keep having fantasies about her. They were both imprisoned in the same prison but in different units. While waiting for the trial, Salvador's defense attempted to persuade him to incriminate Maria in order to reduce his crime responsibility and thus his entire sentence. He adored Maria and refused to tell the truth, especially after receiving love letters from her. Maria wrote so passionately about how she missed him, loved him, and that she couldn't wait for the trial to end, as well as so many romantic and encouraging words that made Salvador believe that his relationship with Maria might have a future after they both served their sentences. She did this by gaining favors from some inmates who would then send the letters to Salvador. But Salvador's hope drastically faded the day he discovered that Maria was having intimate relationships with at least two other prisoners. After receiving this information, Salvador finally decided to speak the truth. Salvador revealed everything about the case, beginning with the planning process and continuing with all other details. According to him, the plan to murder Antonio came about after a serious accident at his workplace in which several of his colleagues died and Antonio nearly died himself. So when Maria met Salvador, she expressed her desire for Antonio to die in the accident and they began planning his murder from that point forward. 
They decided on August 3, 2017 that the murder would take place on August 12, 2017. This is supported by numerous calls and messages exchanged between the two at the time. While planning and analyzing their options, they decided that the murder should be done quietly with a knife. Salvador purchased the knife himself, and after killing him, he threw his crime weapon into a septic tank. The police later discovered the knife and confirmed that it was indeed the knife used to murder Antonio. When Salvador came forward with the truth, it revealed many secrets, but Maria complicated things so much that it appeared to be impossible to entangle them. A disturbing revelation was that one day before her husband's murder, Maria told Antonio that she was leaving for work, but the truth is that she went to another lover of hers, Thomas, a physiotherapist with whom she had previously spent several nights with. So, during this time, Maria managed to have three lovers outside of her marriage. Maria met Thomas six months before getting married, and that's when they started a relationship together. It was Thomas who tried to talk her out of marrying Antonio, who later discovered her affair by finding messages on her phone. Antonio decided to forgive her if she promised she would never see Thomas again. Maria made the promise to never see him again, but she continued to do so behind his back. Thomas stated that Maria told him several times that her husband was abusing her and that he felt sorry for her. What surprised me the most was Maria's decision to have dinner with her husband one day before his murder. Little did he know that she had planned his murder with one of her lovers. The next day, Maria texted Antonio to let him know that her schedule had changed and she wouldn't be able to come home that night because she was on duty. She also informed him that dinner was prepared for the evening. Antonio woke up and prepared to go to work, and Salvador, who had come to carry out his sinister mission, arrived on a motorcycle wearing black glasses and a cap that Maria had given to him. Salvador wore latex gloves to enter the garage in order to avoid leaving any fingerprints behind. He hid in the garage as he patiently waited for the arrival of his enemy, and when he saw Antonio, he attacked him from behind in a violent and sudden manner, stabbing him six times and then managed to flee the scene unnoticed. His next move will undoubtedly surprise you. Salvador did nothing else but change his WhatsApp profile. This was his way of telling Maria that he had completed the sinister job. He then disposed of the knife and his blood-stained clothes in the trash. Later, Maria and Salvador meet at the home of Maria's sister, who is on vacation, and Salvador tells her every sickening detail about the crime he committed. To avoid suspicion, they agree not to contact each other for a few weeks. Salvador thought that now he was finally able to be together with Maria, but she had a different idea in mind. She met Salvador again at her husband's funeral, who she greeted from afar. Maria began partying immediately after the funeral, but it was her family who advised her to keep quiet because she was still in mourning and that her going out would be misinterpreted. She continued to go out and see Jose, the publicist, as well as Thomas, the physiotherapist, who she had met three weeks before Antonio's murder. Aside from the two men, Maria began dating Sergio, a security guard she had met at a nightclub. He knew nothing about her situation and, when questioned, stated that she did not appear to be mourning or in sadness. Maria continued living multiple lives until she was arrested. Her love life was a real maze that complicated the police's work even more. I'm about to blow your mind yet again. Further investigation revealed that Maria had another lover, a nurse, who worked at the same hospital. She was seeing him while she was married, and the two went on intimate dates occasionally. According to Salvador's statements, Maria was content and unconcerned about the consequences, but rather she was focused on getting the money as soon as possible. Antonio had taken out a life insurance policy through his work, so Maria was expecting a widow's pension of 1,100 euros per month, as well as a premium of 47,000 euros since he died violently. She told many of her friends about it, contacted the insurance provider, and asked the administrative services to declare that Antonio's death was the result of a violent accident so that she could receive the maximum payout from her husband's insurance, all of which serve as evidence that she was motivated by money. 
But Maria never admitted she was the mastermind behind her husband's murder. She kept defending herself by accepting the affairs and denying that she ordered the killing. She explained that they had already spoken and that when she learned about the murder, she was too scared to call the police, but not scared enough to stop seeing Salvador. This allowed her to justify their meeting immediately following the murder. Everything was crystal clear for the authorities. She ordered Salvador to kill Antonio because she wanted the widow's pension and a part of his inheritance. Meanwhile, Salvador accepted to do this because he was in love. On October 14, 2020, Maria was sentenced to 22 years in prison and Salvador to 18 years, in a trial that was very much in the public eye. The court determined that Maria had aggravating circumstances because she was married to the victim, whereas Salvador had extenuating circumstances. In addition to the jail time, Maria was sentenced to pay 200,000 euros to Antonio's parents and 50,000 euros to his brother to cover the family's legal expenses. A month later, on November 18, 2020, a popular jury confirmed Maria's sentence of 22 years and Salvador of 18 years in prison. Maria's family was devastated because they initially believed that the daughter was innocent, if not a victim, and that Salvador had orchestrated everything. On the other hand, Salvador's family was shattered. His wife filed for divorce and his children refused to visit him because they didn't want anything to do with their father. His ex-wife stated that she never imagined Salvador would be capable of planning and committing such a heinous crime, and she was also unaware of his affair, which occurred right in front of her eyes. She was in a difficult situation because she had found herself in the spotlight without knowing anything. But it's Maria who does not appear to have learned her lesson from this horrific act. Even in prison, Maria behaves in the same way, but Salvador is no longer her puppet. She doesn't communicate with him since she sees him as being in the past. She regularly works as a nurse's assistant or in the prison kitchens and maintains relationships with inmates. Maria was discovered having intimate relations with David, a convicted murderer. They sneaked in during a class in a small room in the sociocultural building. Aside from David, she's said to be in a relationship with another inmate who also works in the kitchen. Maria maintains multiple relationships and thanks to her charming personality, she's able to obtain products such as cigarettes and alcohol from prisoners. As a result of the tasks she has performed, Maria has gained a privileged status in prison and is able to enjoy terrorist activities, visit the sports hall and library, and even watch television from her cell. Salvador, on the other hand, is no celebrity. He has been emotionally broken down, hasn't talked to anyone in a long time, and frequently cries, as revealed by his cellmate, who has promised to keep an eye on him so that he doesn't commit suicide. There is a protocol in place to keep inmates from committing suicide, which usually lasts two weeks in theory, but for Salvador, it lasted months due to his unstable emotional state. I chose to present this case to you not only because of the evil murder, but also because of Maria's character, a woman with five lovers, which is still something very unusual. I learned from further research and reading about the case that Maria was diagnosed by experts who gave her a high psychopathic score. As a result, people with a psychopathic personality have a sexuality marked by several characteristics such as sexual precocity, the multiplication of sexual parts, the adoption of an uncommitted attitude toward the sexual relationship, and hypersexualization, all of which can be found in Maria's character and behaviors. Her behaviors are also described as a pattern of recurrent intense and excessive preoccupation with sexual fantasies, strong sexual urges, and individual behaviors that are out of the person's control. She appears to have lost track of her own actions and continued to lie and cheat each of her many lovers. A 2012 study found that when a person has a high overall psychopathy score, he or she has a higher sexual sensation and seeks more risky sexual behaviors. Maria had numerous affairs with men she met on the road, on nights out, at work, and in other places. It is thought that she may feel very few emotions, particularly negative emotions like fear and stress, which may explain why she engages in such risky behavior. As a result, these kinds of sexual experiences would compensate for her emotional poverty. That is, she chose to satisfy one of her primary needs, intimacy, to the extreme due to a lack of empathy. 
But despite not being completely capable, or worse, choosing not to feel emotions, she was someone who knew how to channel them. She wrote such passionate love letters to Salvador while having other relationships and probably not feeling the same way about him. Being in a position where she didn't want to be with her husband but couldn't afford divorcing him, she chose to kill him. Being in a position where she didn't want to be with Salvador anymore but couldn't afford jail time, she chose to continue manipulating him. Salvador was in a dependent relationship with Maria and he became so consumed by her that he killed another human being. I was so mind blown when I found out that Maria tried to convince all of her lovers to murder Antonio and the only one that accepted to do so was Salvador. I can't even imagine to picture how Salvador must have felt to learn that Maria had cheated on him and that he had wrecked his family for a woman who no longer even wanted to be with him. This was the story of the Black Widow, a woman capable of having not a double life but multiple lives at the same time up to the point of deceiving almost every person she interacted with. While she continues with her behaviors, it looks like sadly I can't put a the end to her story, but rather a suspenseful to be continued. Thank you for listening and don't forget to follow for more crime stories.